By now, you've all seen this classic illustration of the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, if you're in my class, you've constructed this as well on Sketchpad. And right here, if we start with a right triangle, we can clearly demonstrate that the sum of the squares, that is the measure of the areas of these two blue squares, when added together, is going to be equal to the measure of this larger square representing the hypotenuse, the one in the reddish one. Now, conversely, we would know that if these measures add up to the same as this one, that demonstrates that this triangle is in fact a right triangle. So, let's change it up a little bit and make it more exciting. How about if a squared plus b squared does not equal c squared? Right there, the sum of the two blue squares is still 90. The red square is only 76. So, a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. Just look at that triangle. You know it's acute. Well, you know in math we always have the trichotomy. Greater than, less than, or equal. Let's move it this way. What have we got now? Two blue squares, again, 90 square centimeters. They are less than the red square the c squared. And of course, that would mean, well, just look at the picture. It's obtuse. So there you have it. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we have a right triangle. If it's greater than c squared, acute. Less than c squared, obtuse. Now let's use this converse of the Pythagorean theorem. We'll do the setup right here. We're testing to see whether 2 squared plus 6 squared is greater than, less than, or equal to 3 radical 5 squared. Well, let's just perform the squaring and evaluate. And we say, aha, uh -huh, it is not. This triangle is obtuse. How about this triangle? Here we go. We've got 5 squared and 1 squared, radical 26 squared, which, of course, is a right triangle. Well, let's classify a triangle having sides 9, 10, and 15 units. So, as we've learned before, we'll set up square two of the smaller legs compared to the largest leg, or side, I should say. And let's see. I can just evaluate there and see that the two legs add up to less than the square of the third side. Therefore, this triangle is obtuse. How about a triangle with these three sides? Let's see what kind of figure it is. And again, we'll square the three sides, add up the two smaller ones, and let's compare. And what do you know? They come up equal. This is indeed a right triangle. However, we could have really done this too. Had you just factored a common 12 out of those three given sides, you would see this is a Pythagorean triple a multiple of d345. Well, now we're going to classify a triangle with sides 5, 6, 7 units. But first, let's make sure it's a triangle. And we need to perform this test. I'm going to take the two shorter sides, 5 and 6, add them together, and yes, indeed, they're greater than 7. That first confirms, after all, that the figure is a triangle. Don't forget that step. Now, well, let's compare the two smaller squares to the larger square. And let's see, there, there's the squaring, and add them together, and what do you know, that's larger than 49. This triangle is acute. Well, how about 12, 16, 20? Let's see what we've got here. First, a cursory check. The two smaller sides add up to more than a third, so it's indeed a triangle. Well, you can see that. And let's set them up, and we'll perform those squares. And let's see, hmm, compare. Looks like a right triangle to me. Of course, you, know, you could have just looked at those three numbers and said, that's a three, four, five Pythagorean triple. Well, let's classify this triangle, 15, 20, 36. But wait, let's first check the triangle inequality principle. Oh, this is not even a triangle. You can see 15, 20, and 36 doesn't work out. Remember, 
any two sides have to add up to more than the third. Now let's graph these given points and find out what kind of triangle we're looking at. There's your points A, B, and C, and we'll draw in the segments. Color coded them for your convenience. And you'll notice we stuck with conventional naming where side C is opposite vertex C, side B is opposite vertex B, etc. So now we're going to employ the distance formula to find the lengths of those three sides. You'll recall the distance formula looks like this. But you know where we're going to compare a squared plus b squared to c squared. Let's take this distance formula and square both sides. That's what we need right there. Okay with that? All right. Let's get to it. We'll take each of the sides. If I were to take the green side, the b squared, and I'll using that distance formula, the side squared is 10. And here we go on the blue side, the a squared, and on the red squared, or the c squared, 26. Now you can see right away, 10 and 20, that makes 30. So I've got 30 greater than 26. And well, if I were to analyze this, I'd have to say a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. This triangle is acute. Well, let's see what we can find with this triangle with lengths 5x, 12x, 13x for all values x greater than 0. Substituting into our Pythagorean theorem, that is the converse we're trying to prove what kind of triangle this is. I've got to square all these values. And when I do that, remember I'm squaring the 5s, I'm squaring the x squareds. And look at that. You know, I can factor out, or which is also called distributing, here on the left. And now I can divide out the x squared from both sides of the equation. There you go. And I can add them together. And certainly, it looks like I've got a right triangle, obeying the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Really, all you've drawn here is this. And all this represents are these 5x, 12x, and 13x for non-zero x's represent all the multiples of this Pythagorean triple. Well, we have two triangles here. Let's compare the measures of angle A with the measure of angle D. Well, we'll speed this up. You're, you've got this by now. Well, ABC is clearly a right triangle, according to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And let's look at triangle DEF. That's going to be acute. So there it is. You can check that out. Now, if angle A is a right angle, and D is an acute angle, I think we can safely conclude the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle D. And once I know that the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle D, it follows that the other two angles in this triangle add up to more, I'm sorry, less than the two angles ENF in this triangle. 